It is Monday, October 24th. This is the Wilt Fong Whip Around. I'm Lance Glenn, joined as always by the Director of Recruiting for 24-7 Sports, Steve Wilt Fong. Steve, it was a fun week eight. We have a lot to talk about on today's show, a lot of big recruiting weekends to recap. But before we do that, how are you? Did you have a nice uh, relaxing last couple of days this past weekend? How was it? Never able to relax uh, when you cover recruiting, Lance, just trying to keep up with everything every weekend. These coaches are out there working hard, courting the top players in the country. Kids are taking visits. It's, uh, you know, it's exciting times on the 24-7 Sports Network. Yeah, absolutely. And like we always say, recruiting never stops. So that means we never stop. Make sure to find all the best recruiting news over at 247sports.com. And remember to like this video and subscribe to the 247 Sports YouTube channel. And if you're listening as a podcast, remember to give the 247 Sports Football Recruiting Podcast feed a five star rating and a review. So, Steve, like I said, a lot of big recruiting weekends this past Saturday. And let's start out west, Autzen Stadium. Oregon UCLA, a big win for the Ducks, a big win for Dan Lanning. They had a lot of big time recruits in attendance. So, what are you hearing about the environment, about the big win, and about the impression that Oregon made on all the top targets that were there watching the game? Oregon, six wins in a row, scoring over 40 in all of them, Lance. They had a 70 spot in one of those ball games. So, this program has really rallied. Uh, um, you know, after the tough season opener against Georgia and talking to people around the program, culture is the word that's getting thrown. Teams throw it around a lot, but it's obvious at, at Oregon uh, right away, this new staff has instilled a, a strong culture there uh, for that team to rebound and, and, and the level that they're playing at right now, you know, is, is very exciting. And who knows, maybe they'll get another crack at Georgia down the road if they can continue to play at the level that they're playing at right now. Recruits loved it, man. Talked to a lot of the prospects that were on campus. I fired in three 24 7 sports crystal ball predictions in favor of Oregon over the last 48 hours. We'll talk about them in a second, but. You know, the environment was crazy. Nothing like I've ever seen before, said Cody DeCambra, one of the jewels of an Oregon class that ranks number 12 nationally right now. It was amazing. Uh, Tidum Tuioti also chimed in, who's an, another four-star commit committed to Oregon. They had so many uh, uh, offered prospects in 2024 and beyond there, including uh, one of their top quarterback targets in Miles Jackson out of Long Beach, California, Milliken. He said Oregon made him really feel like a priority. And how about that? Like the Oregon staff, they're playing their biggest game of the season against UCLA. The coaching staff able to, to uh, uh, multitask and get, get the job done on the field and, and make these recruits feel so welcome. Uh, uh, Miles Jackson loved the atmosphere, loved the play calling. And, and uh, you know, a lot of the offensive players talked about the play calling of Kenny Dillingham. And, uh, um, you know, certainly uh, uh, the guys on campus loved the way the defense played. Let's get to those crystal balls, though, Lance. I like Oregon uh, to, to land offensive lineman Ayapani Lalulu out of uh, Honolulu. Farrington, his brother, is already in Eugene. We talked about it a month ago or so uh, that Oregon was trending uh, coming out of his official visit on October 1, so less than a month ago, excuse me, but time is flying around here. I like Oregon for a couple 2024s right now. Uh, top 247 linebacker Justin Williams out of Conroe, Texas, Oak Ridge High. Uh, he's the number eight linebacker in the country. Logged a crystal ball for the Ducks for him. Also like Oregon for uh, A.J. Pugliano, top 247 tight end out of North Medford there in Oregon. My forecast joining Brandon Huffman's. He's the number one player in the state, number five tight end nationally. Uh, uh, I could see all three of those guys in the boat for Oregon sooner rather than later, uh, maybe even perhaps before uh, we're recording here at 930 in the morning, maybe perhaps before this whip around even goes live uh, on YouTube later today. But Jaden Lamar is a four-star running back committed to Notre Dame in the 2023 class. He visited this weekend. I really think this is trending nicely for Oregon. Uh, um, talking to some people that spent some time with him, they feel like Oregon is has, is, has really solidified their position in this one. So a, a flip from Notre Dame to Oregon regarding Jaden Lamar would not surprise me. But Lance, Oregon uh, put on a show on the field. Recruits in attendance loved it. They continue to vibe with the Oregon staff that from top to bottom does a great job recruiting. Uh, um, some new offers went out. Uh, um, we, we had a crystal ball uh, on Oregon 
for Chase Farrell, a speedy receiver from Oaks Christian High. Uh, before he visited, he was offered on the visit. Um, Oregon, you know, they 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 uh, uh, offered um, they offered Nico Clem, and uh, um, so they're they're gonna they're in a good spot for a lot of these young men, Lance. Nico yeah, he, certainly being the son of offensive line coach Adrian Clem. So a nice little connection there, Adrian Clem, obviously, and Nico Clem. And he mentioned time is flying, and we're getting close. We're getting close to the to that early signing period. Only about what two months away, a little bit less than that. And Oregon trying to make a, a little bit of a late push to move, maybe even up into the top ten. And you mentioned they're hitting on some twenty twenty fours as well. Uh, they're trying to trying to get the spatula out and, and flip some guys too, uh, like Jaden Lamar. So the Ducks, a big weekend for the Ducks, uh, both on the field. Uh, with obviously getting a win and obviously off the field in recruiting. And Steve, I want to go across the country now and let's move over to Happy Valley, a white out atmosphere for Penn State with their really dominating win. I think it was 45 17 or something over Minnesota. And I mean, they had a ton, a ton, a ton of kids uh, in attendance, watching the game, taking in the action, taking in the atmosphere. It's obviously any where it should be on any college football fans bucket list to go to a whiteout. I've never been to one. I've been to a Penn state game. I went uh, when I was a student at Rutgers for Rutgers Penn state game. Didn't go very well for me, but nevertheless, it was an amazing atmosphere to see. It was an amazing atmosphere uh, to be at one of college football's best. And I got to assume that the top prospects in attendance really loved the atmosphere and really loved soaking up everything that that state college and that happy Valley has to offer. Yeah, I think one prospect to keep an eye on for Penn State right now is four-star linebacker Kavian Keys out of Richmond, Verena High, uh, currently committed to North Carolina. Penn State made that a hellacious battle down the stretch there. Uh, um, I think that Penn State is is certainly one to continue to watch uh, moving forward for Keys as they try and build on a recruiting class ranked number 13 nationally right now by the 24-7 sports uh, um, composite rankings. Joseph Mupoi from St. Thomas More, an edge rusher, six foot five, 230 pounds. Penn State's had so much success with guys from that region with this frame, building them up and, and, and turning them in the draft picks down the road. I think that Penn State is the one to beat for him as well. Brian Doan talked to him uh, uh, coming out of the visit and uh, he gave it high marks. Uh, and, and then from there, Obviously, they got a lot of their commits back, had so many key targets in 2024 and 2025 and beyond. Um, Brian Robinson, an edge rusher from Ohio, uh, Ernest Willer, an edge rusher who's playing down at IMG Academy. They raved about it. Ellis Robinson, the number four overall recruit in the 2024 class. He was the highest ranked prospect on campus, said it was electric, and and uh, he's from New Jersey. Um, Penn State's been on him for a long time. Tysir Denmark, a, a top 247 receiver, who's going to commit somewhere in November. Penn State's on his short list. He was back, had a fabulous time. Well, we could do a whole show just breaking down uh, all the visitors and, and, and their thoughts on it. Uh, um, but the returns were high. You know, one, one staffer at Penn State told me that He's trying, you know, that the whiteouts are really special and he's just trying not to take it for granted, you know, because he's, he's been a part of several of them now. Uh, um, but it's it's definitely a cool environment. You can feel it through your TV. And uh, uh, Luke, Luke Cromahoke was a quarterback that's that's committed to Florida State whose stock is on the rise. He said the fans were crazy. It was unbelievably loud. Um, said that uh, every recruit person should see at least once in their lives this this experience. He said it was unbelievable, but he did throw in there that he's still super solid to FSU. But I was very impressed with everything about Penn State. And you know, you mentioned uh, Joseph Mapoi, and I think one thing to keep in mind with him is that his teammate Zion Tracy is also right now committed to Penn State. So, what does that mean for Penn State? I would assume it bodes well for them. Uh, but definitely something to watch. And like you said, Brian Doan had, had a ton on it. Of course, you can find so much on it on, on lions247.com. But like like we said, and like the recruits were saying, the whiteout is really or should be on, on every college football fan's bucket list because it is just one of the top atmospheres in college football. It doesn't get much better than that, especially here in the Northeast. And I know the Northeast gets a lot of flack uh, for our college football. Uh, but let's move on to Clemson now. Let's go a little bit down south. And I mentioned Oregon and Penn State had big wins. Clemson won their game against Syracuse, but some storylines came out of that game, most notably, obviously, the benching of DJ Uyangalale for Kate Klubnik, Dabo Sweeney maintaining that DJ is the guy. 
But on the recruiting trail, they hosted some big names. They hosted some top targets. What are you hearing on that end from what those recruits experienced at Clemson and in Death Valley? Well, Tamari and Parker, number six defensive lineman in the top 247, uh, top 100 player, took his official visit to Clemson. And it was a key, uh, key timing for the Tigers as he was at Tennessee last weekend. And those are the two I'm looking at the most for, for Tamari and TJ Parker. He was there for the win over Alabama. Uh, but he said his official to Clemson was amazing, you know, getting to hang out with the guys and, and watching the defense get after it. He said, you know, were his highlights uh, of the visit. He loved the atmosphere, loved the fans, uh, loves the stability of the staff and, and the relationships he has with the Clemson program. And they're the 24-7 sports crystal ball favorite. Sounds like it was a really good official visit. The Tigers would love to add him to a class that ranks number eight nationally per the 24-7 sports composite uh, uh, rankings. They would also love to land four-star defensive lineman Kaden McDonald, who took his uh, unofficial visit, maybe his last visit before he decides on Halloween. Uh, um, but Clemson, uh, his good buddy Avian Terrell is committed to the Tigers. He also spent a lot of time with Jamal Anderson and Vic Burley. Uh, so he really gets along with the guys in Clemson's class. Uh, he enjoyed his conversation with Coach Sweeney. Coach Sweeney told him he's a fit for Clemson. They also talked about proximity. Uh, uh, to home and and uh, how easy it would be for his mom to get to the games. And he loved watching the D-line get after it and even noticed all the NFL scouts there watching the D-line warm up. So uh, those, those were some of his big takeaways there. I think that, you know, when you also look at some of the other names that, that were on campus for Clemson this, this weekend, they're, they're in a good spot for uh, athlete recruit Masoon Kelly. I have a 24-7 sports crystal ball in favor of Clemson for him. He's going to come back on his official for the South Carolina game over Thanksgiving. And then Khalil Barnes is a, a safety from uh, North Oconee High there in Georgia. Uh, I like where Clemson stands with him. He also has an official visit set uh, uh, for that same weekend in November. I think Clemson's the team to beat as they battle the likes of Notre Dame and Oklahoma for him. Like Penn State, like Oregon, a lot of juniors on campus also raved about the experience. So Clemson, a noon kickoff against a previously undefeated Syracuse, that environment still delivered. Those coaches just do a good job of, of, of creating uh, an environment that recruits like to be in. And, and uh, you can tell when you talk to prospects after their trip. You know, Steve, you mentioned both or all three with Oregon, Penn State and Clemson, uh, a couple 2024 guys. Have you started to see as we get closer to the early signing period, schools and programs start to pivot more towards 2024 as their 2023s fill up? Is that a trend that you've been seeing on the trail as, you know, these kids start to to take more visits, take more game day visits? And like I said, as we get closer to that early signing period where now most 2023 kids will sign? Well, I think that what you what I've noticed over the last few years, especially with the early signing period, is that prospects are now getting pushed to make their decisions in the spring and summer because that's when the majority of them are taking their official visits. And so the game day visits, while you still see teams trying to flip recruits and you still have a, a few guys that are waiting to the end, so they're taking their officials in the fall or maybe uh, in December, the, the game day visits have really turned into like a showcase for the 2024 class, the juniors that are taking their game visits now, then will turn around in the spring and summer and take their officials and decide before their senior seasons. That is for, I would say, 60 to 70 percent of the prospects. That's kind of what it's turned into is big game visits as a junior, official visits in spring or early summer decision. And then uh, um, so these game visits are big for these juniors. You know, South Carolina, that was a, a school that we didn't talk about uh, in the pregame. But I, I definitely want to highlight what they did, Lance. You know, they hosted a ton, a ton of young prospects for their big win uh, over over um, Texas A&M. They have the number 15 class in, in the country right now. And they, you know, they want that's the highest ranked class that would match their highest ranked class in, in 24 seven sports history if they're able to hang on to to that group and or build on that. And then, you know, to to defeat Texas A&M in front of several coveted recruits, you know, top two, four, seven, DJ, Ch top two, four, seven offensive lineman DJ Chester was one of the 2023 recruits that was there. Auburn safety commit Terrence Love was was another there. Uh, they had uh, recently offered running back. 
uh, Khalifa Keith, uh, uh, he was there. So they're, they're still trying to add to that 2023 class. But then in 2024, uh, KJ Bolden, the number three overall player in the top 247, he was there, loved how the fans were fired up for four quarters, really felt that atmosphere. And he's been to Ohio State. Tennessee and other places for for games this fall. King Joseph Edwards is is a, a athlete edge tight end that that had a tremendous experience. Jaden Bradford, perhaps their top quarterback target on the board uh, down at IMG Academy, but from South Carolina, uh, uh, loved loved being back there for his first night game. He said it said it was great. But Jonathan Paylor is a speedy receiver from North Carolina that that had a tremendous experience. Top two four seven running back Anthony Carey's been there a couple times now. Had had a great visit, and and, and so you could go to the big spur and read about all the underclassmen uh, uh, that were there. Heaven Brown Schuler, another that's been to South Carolina many times, who, who's a coveted uh, a, a recruit. Uh, South Carolina, Shane Beamer and company, uh, right from out the gate, a kickoff there uh, uh, to ignite the crowd, and, and recruits felt it all evening there in Williams Bryce Stadium. Yeah, absolutely. And you got to you got to applaud what Shane Beamer has been able to do since he took over at South Carolina on the recruiting trail as well as on the field. Uh, and this obviously a big win against the Texas A&M team that right now is a uh, it's very much in flux to, to say the least. And Jimbo Fisher uh, certainly feeling the heat out there in College Station. So we hit on Oregon. Losing on- a lot of games like Nebraska was right. One score games. They're yeah, in all these yeah. games, but they're not winning any of them. And especially when you have when you have the number one recruiting class the previous year, and when you're paid as much as Jimbo Fisher is paid. Now, look, I'm not trying to count anyone's money, but when you get the contract that he did, and you're not performing on the field, now, now, fortunately, I should say for Jimbo, that contract comes with a very large buyout. Uh, so it seems to me like at least he'll be there for another year, and then they'll see what the results are on the field in 2023. But I mean, something, you know, and we talked about this in a previous episode, Steve, but something needs to change in College Station because look, yikes, I mean, yikes. Look, you see the you, you the, the Phillies, they're going to the World Series. They won like 87-something games, right? Like, so uh, college football playoff expansion is exciting when you talk about teams that can maybe get hot and make a run late. Like Texas A&M, I mean, I'm not saying they would make the playoff under any circumstance, but – they're talented, man. They're not winning these games right now. They're losing losing close ball games left and right, different ways each Saturday. Now they got Ole Miss coming to town this weekend. Ole Miss coming off their first loss. What a what a performance uh, that LSU put on there uh, in Baton Rouge on Saturday to take apart Ole Miss. Uh, um, but Texas A and M, they're very talented. You know, they, 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 some tweaks with that program should be in order. Uh, for next season, in my opinion, to specifically max- offensively, offensively, uh, specifically. Course, yeah. to maximize that, yeah. you know, they, they have, they have good quarterbacks in their quarterback room. They have running backs that people would love to have in their running back room. They have one of the more exciting young receivers in America, but he's not the only talented player in their receiver room. And so I know they need to build up that offensive line again, that, you know, that, that team, that went finished top five, had a terrific offensive line. They had a terrific offensive line coach who's now at USC. So that's certainly an area area, but defense, we know they're going to be awesome for, for, for years to come on defense. So a and M they're just not playing as well as they should be right now. Everybody knows that. Yeah, they're not. And, and everything's bigger in Texas. And so is the criticism. And so, and so is the heat that, that is right now being poured uh, on to Jimbo Fisher in that program in College Station. So we hit on Oregon, we hit on Penn State, we hit on Clemson, we hit on South Carolina. Let's end it with TCU. Let's stay in the Lone Star State. The Horned Frogs in what was a big, a really a huge Big 12 matchup uh, against Kansas State. They came out victorious. They remain undefeated in the Big 12. Still in the playoff picture is TCU under Sonny Dykes. What are you hearing out of, out of, out of TCU, uh, out of that big win? Uh, against the Wildcats. I mean, Sonny Dykes has got it rolling uh, down there in Texas. And, and TCU, like I said, undefeated. They're they're pushing and, and they're making some noise in that college football playoff picture. Yeah. Oregon, we talked about them at the top of the show. They're having a ton of fun in Eugene right now. TCU's having just as much fun, if not maybe even a little bit more uh, uh, than Oregon with the way they're playing right now. 
uh, seven and zero uh, uh, for TCU. The last four wins coming over ranked opponents. The last two erasing double-digit deficits in the second half. So it's just been fun to watch them play. They're trying to finish with their first twenty top twenty-five recruiting class in a few years. They're sitting at number twenty-six. Four-star defensive lineman Ashton Porter uh, was there. Uh, uh, fresh off his decommitment from Northwestern. I know some of our colleagues are predicting Michigan State there, but TCU is going to go hard here. And uh, Coach Garland, Coach Dykes made an impression on him. He enjoyed the crowd. Randon uh, Fontanetti is a four-star safety that's a longtime commit to Utah, but TCU is a program that's been in, in the mix for a little bit now. He was supposed to visit TCU last weekend, wasn't able to make it, made it this past weekend was offered in person, loves the culture and the coaching staff at TCU, really enjoyed the game atmosphere and, and said that the winning stands out, you know, and, and, and that they can compete and win. One player who wasn't there uh, but was gonna was at the win over Oklahoma, which really started this hot streak, was top 247 athlete um, Michael Harrison Pilot, uh, who I, I think TCU is the one to beat for. He said he watched it from home, loved the way they fought back. Uh, um, said that no team is recruiting him as hard as TCU, that they're treating him like family. Again, like all, like all the other programs, so many young players on campus that that uh, uh, enjoyed the experience as well. So TCU, Sonny Dykes, this new staff, they have a lot going on. Uh, um, they are, are, are energizing players in the state of Texas or recruits in the state of Texas. And uh, uh, the Big 12, man, I was looking at it, Lance, there's no gimme. Uh, in that league, man, the, the parody in the big 12 is, is, is awesome right now. So, you know, they got their work cut out for them in the next five ball games, but they've taken care of business to date. They've had some really impressive wins. The kids are playing hard. They're playing their ass off. They're playing for four quarters and that's resonating with recruits, man. And, and, and so TCU, they've been one of the fun teams to cover on the recruiting trail over the last month. And that's why we've been talking about them so much on whip around and land speaking of whip around let's whip around on a couple topics here to end the show 24 7 sports composite five-star quarterback Jaden davis will be back at michigan this weekend as the wolverines host michigan state in prime time jim harbaugh went by Jaden davis's school in the in the day and then matt weiss offensive coordinator stuck around in the evening to watch Jaden davis throw for nearly 500 yards and, and three touchdowns including a game winner and, and a big win for them Michigan, it seems like it's trending very well for them, for Jaden Davis. We've talked about that a lot. Clemson, he had a great visit to Clemson earlier this season. Uh, Tennessee, he was there for the win over Alabama. They're in the mix. LSU is in there. North Carolina is in there. But it, it, it's easy to see that Michigan has a ton of momentum with, with, with Jaden Davis there. Top 247 running back Cedric C.J. Baxter is going to take an official visit to Florida State this weekend. Talked to his father this morning. And uh, I still think he's going to be hard to pull away from Texas, uh, one of the jewels of this Longhorns class. Um, they love to shard choice, love Sark. They were honest and upfront with the Texas staff saying, hey, we're still probably going to take some official visits, enjoy the rest of this process. And he was at Florida State's game this past weekend, and he liked the way that Florida State ran the ball against Clemson. So, excuse me, two weekends ago, uh, it all runs together when you're covering recruiting. Uh, um, but uh, so he's going to get back, take his official, but uh, I think it's going to take a lot. Uh, it's going to take a lot for, for um, um, Florida State or any other program to flip that. And then, um, you know, David Hobbs, he took his, his visit to Alabama over the weekend. You know, I talked to his, his mom a little bit coming out of that. And the Tennessee set the bar in that recruitment for these last officials, which also includes Georgia. Um, but, you know, his mom said that Alabama was top notch. There were so many details that made the experience different and special from our other experiences on campus. The staff that we met, the academics, behavioral health, diversity and inclusion and in trainers were impressive. She talked about it being homecoming weekend. So that added to the extra fun. The entire campus and city was at the game. She said in game day atmosphere is something big for, for David Hobbs and his decision. That's something that she's mentioned several times. And then she added that the coaching staff, the history of the program and their model for building young men into successful adults after after college was another thing that that stood out for Alabama as they try and land him. They tried to make a move with Jordan Hall this weekend. I like Georgia coming in there, but Alabama got a chance to to host him. And then let's end the show with Arian Carter, who's a four star linebacker, Lance from Smyrna, Tennessee. I think Alabama is the team to beat going into what's about to be a run of official visits for him. He's going to be at Tennessee 
this weekend. He's going to go to Ohio State on November 12th. It's going to be Michigan on November 19th. That was originally going to be LSU, but I like that for Michigan, or Michigan's going to get that official that weekend. Uh, And then Alabama gets the last official visit, Iron Bowl weekend. I think it's up to those other three schools to show him, hey, this is why you shouldn't go to Alabama. Not negative recruiting. I'm just saying, like, this is why we're better for you than Alabama is how I should have really enunciated that because I think Alabama is the one to beat for a young man that's currently committed to Memphis but having an outstanding senior season on both sides of the ball. So you see these programs that are competing for the college football playoff and why they want Arian Carter to come in and help them do that for years to come. Yeah, you always you always feel like when Alabama is involved in a recruitment, it's always the job of the other schools to say, this is why you shouldn't go to Alabama, right? It's it's never, this is why you should well, come not, here. Or it's some not type necessarily of like that. Again, we didn't enunciate that correctly. What you What you mean to say is, Alabama is the bar in your recruitment. Here's, here's yes. Here, you know, here's why. Here's why we should far. be instead of Alabama. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, you're right. We did not see it correctly. Um, and we both always compare and contrasting to Alabama, right? I feel like yeah. when Alabama is involved, it's always like you always got to watch the tide. You can never count the tide out for anyone, especially no when they're recruiting uh, uh, and get an official. I mean, it's just prospect no after prospect after prospect. When the tide are involved, even if you think that 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 another school is the favorite for a prospect, if no Alabama is there. Alabama can switch that and become the favorite just like that. It's really wild to see uh, what Nick Saban does and what that program does just on a year in and year out basis. And, and Steve, it's it was a pleasure as always. So many big weekends, so many big games, so many big so many big visits uh, this past weekend, and of course some more to come in the weeks to follow. Remember, we'll be back with you on Friday, previewing some of the biggest recruiting weekends of Week Nine as we just passed Week Eight. So Steve, thanks so much as always. Really appreciate the time uh, on this Monday. Yeah, man. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to Whip Around. See you all later in the week on various shows on this platform. So remember to like this video, of course, and subscribe to the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel. And if you're listening as a podcast, remember to give us a five-star rating and a review on the 24-7. Lynn, thanks for listening. This has been the Wolf Fong Whip Around.